Four teams move in, but two are going to get kicked out. We'll find out who's got the goods and who's hitting the wood. Are the Tournament of Champions qualifying episode of... Arena! Welcome to Arena, the show that turns multiplayer games into competitive sport. I'm Lee Remnant. and today, what an episode we've got for you. We have brought back the four best teams from this season to compete for Destination Vacation in our Tournament of Champions, people. And the winner will receive our all-expenses-paid trip to the land of palm trees and hula girls and all kinds of stuff I can't talk about. And it's all in Hawaii. Now, this is the cream of the crop, as none of these teams here today have ever lost on this show. So you can expect plenty of top-notch arena action. Now let's go to top-notch Kevin in the PC ring to explain how the gameplay is going to work. Kavina. All right, thanks, Big Daddy. Today we're doing things a little bit different. In our semifinal round, as our teams will be playing one game and one game only. It's Unreal Tournament 2004. Now it's a round-robin style competition. Each team will face each other once, and when the dust settles, two teams will advance to the finals. And there will be no excuses because we'll be playing all three modes in UT 2004. That's right, Assault, Onslaught, and Capture the Flag. Now, you may not have seen these guys in a little while, so let's get reacquainted with our semifinalists. Our team name is Corpse Factory. We've gotten here by winning three in a row, and yeah, we know we should have won five. When we first got here, I think we were all expecting the, the competition to be a little more fierce. We didn't think that that uh, we were going to do as well uh, in Unreal. Uh, we definitely thought it would be more challenging. What we're actually looking at is, you know, now we've got some really good competition, so right now it's anyone's game. That's pretty much what our town is like. Someone's got to represent the Hicks. We've seen uh, Kaizen play on previous shows, and they look a lot goofier in real life than they do on TV. They'll probably be the ones to beat in qualifying. Team Kaizen, Team Rednecks, and overall, Team Rednecks. Without a doubt, I know the finals are going to be between the Rednecks and Team Kaizen. We didn't win five times during the season to come here and lose. rudest thing you've ever actually encountered. People on the post, on the boards of G4 Arena, if you want a piece of us, bring it on, because we'll kick your uh, There's only four of us uh, that are in this TOC. I see we can be there. I, I don't see any problems with it. I don't see us uh, really losing to anybody. Team Kaizen has actually made us really hate them, so we like that. Professional, amateur, you know, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, you still got to win the game. Uh, just talking about it doesn't get you anywhere. today at all. Since we've been on the show, it's real tough to walk on the streets. All the we have checks. people following yeah. us everywhere. The checks. Wow. We have to carry sticks to beat them Arena off. Arena I'll tell you <laughs> what. We do have a cocky reputation. People hate it when everybody wins all the time. Everyone yeah. always likes to root for the underdogs. So if you're winning, you might as well be cocky. So no one's rooting for us. Nope. And we like it that way because we don't need you to root for us. <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> We're like North Korea. Yiska Barton is so hot. <laughs> So, Miska, if you're out there, <laughs> we'll be gunning for you. We're going to win. Hands down win. I want Silicon back, please. Wow, it looks like our teams have locked those pesky twins' modesty and humility in the closet. But that's part of the reason that they're all here. So when we come back, the gloves are going to come off and we'll let the fragging begin. And we'll also have a special guest commentator from last season's champs on the Tournament of Champions qualifying round of Arena. Welcome back, everyone, to the Tournament of Champions semifinal round of Arena. Now, the entire season, ladies and gentlemen, has come down to this. The penultimate battle, the destination vacation grand prize, an all-expenses-paid trip to Hawaii. And before the break, we had a reunion of sorts with our four teams who are squaring off to determine our top two squads. Now, let's go to Kevin, who's standing by with a special guest. All right, thanks, Lee. Yes, you might recognize our very special guest, either from your local lockup or from last season's winners in the Tournament of Champions, it's Team Kaizen's favorite competitor on Arena, Team Zombies Ray. There's no applause. 
of course. But thanks for being here nonetheless. Now, uh, you were here last season as a player. Uh, tell me, what was your experience? What are these guys feeling right now? What's going on? Well, right now, uh, Devin, they're probably a little nervous. I mean, uh, we've been here for the first time, and they played a little bit, won a little bit, but this is the best of the best. I mean, last time I was here, you know, I was a little nervous, but uh, I knew I only had one competitor, and uh, we took the rest of the teams down, and we ended up winning. So you just got to have confidence, and we'll see who wins. Now, Team Zombie steamrolled their competition last time. Did you guys hold back and save some of the finals, or I mean, what was the strategy? Was it play hard the entire time? It was pretty much uh, just get out there and, you know, make our mark right away. You got to, like, the first match you do, you got to go out there, you got to win. And then from there, people get scared, people get, you know, doubts in their heads, and then you just you can steamroll. So, I mean, we snuck in, and we managed to just take it away, snatch it away. Just win, right? Just win. Now, what's going on backstage? I heard there's a little trash talk from Team Kaizen. I mean, are these players trying to psych each other out? Well, you get, like, both ends of the spectrum. Team Kaizen, talking a little trash. You get the other team, maybe not talking at all. So they're both trying to psych each other out. So we'll see who pulls it out and who uh, is actually successful in the whole uh, psychological aspect. Way to follow it up with uh, see who pulls it out, by the way. Uh, you're going all in on this one. Who, where are you placing your chips? Who's going to take this competition? Well, so far, I haven't seen anybody play. I mean, it's all just speculation right now. But I'd say, uh, from sheer psychological, I go with Team Kaiser because I figure the more talk, you know, trash you talk, the better you are going to do to you know, get people off their game. So, I mean, I put chips on them right now, but I, we'll see after the first round who's, uh, who's for real and who's not. So, Kaiser, all right, we'll see if they can back it up. Ray, thank you very much for joining us. That's enough face time for you. Let's get to the action in our first round of games of Unreal Tournament 2004. One. First up in this qualifying round is Kaizen versus Volger. I mean, I hate to step all over your intro, buddy, but, you know, the action is fast here when you got such amazing teams playing. Incredible. Eska already in possession of the flag, using that lightning gun to mow down Neo, and he's midway across the map, making his way back to the base. Put him about the cat. And Eska goes to plant one, and it's one and nothing for the boys in blue. Team Kaizen out and on the board early. Get that flag. That's a pretty quick score here at Unreal Tournament 2004, especially with teams that are usually so good on the defense. Joining us in booth, Ray, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good, baby. He's in our base. Well, we see that the red team is leaving Neo back to defend, but he's down below. He's underestimating Eska's translocator prowess as he pops up top and grabs a flag right away. He just has speed. Eska leaping his way across the map. He's got the quad damage. He's trying to spray him with some rocket splash damage, and he makes his way. It's two to nothing. Team Kaizen. Why do we even practice for this? I'm looking at Neo right now, and he can, he's not double jumping. He's not jumping around trying to avoid fire. He's maybe using translocator, but he's not moving fast enough. Damn. He's got ways of life. Eska, as if on Q, Rareman. He spent a lot of time with that flag in his hands, and we have a flag grab by Freak. I got the flag. Oh, he thinks he's going to touch the flag. Oh, no. Although he goes down immediately, a quick flurry of offense. A millisecond of excitement out of the red team. Eska with that quad damage shock rifle picking ah. off multiple members of Team Bulger as he makes his way back to his base. Eska grabs Grabs a shield power up, hops on to the elevator and plants another one. Big D, what's the score? It is four to nothing, Team Kaizen. You guys stay, I want to go once. Finally, someone else grabs a flag other than Eska. Not only is uh, Team Kaizen winning, but they're stacking the deck. Eska's gotten most of the flag caps, and that's a million MVP points. Oh, that's like Nick's story. Oh, look at that, they're toying with Team Bulger. They put the flag and they get a little team kill just to put some points on another buddy. And it's a six to nothing shellacking by Kaizen over Team Vulgar. I beat this game. Wow, you score so fast and so There's hard. Two. And round two's underway at the Rednecks versus the Corpse Factory in CTF Twin Tombs. And a flag grab by Master Shake. Flag is returned, but Gazebo's right there. He can jump down and grab it again. And Dexter has a flag for Team Corpse Factory. And Gazebo's back to his home base, but his flag is missing. Gazebo's in possession of his team's flag. Gazebo with the flag for Team Rednecks. Dexter with the flag for Team Corpse Factory. Get that flag. And Dexter has the blue flag, and now I'm freaking bad has the red flag. And I'm freaking bad runs away from the heat, bounces up top using that rocket launcher. I drop. Try to take him down with a flag. Oh. Try to take him down with rocket splash damage. He goes down. Spectre on the offense. The flag has been returned, and Dexter plants it. One to nothing game for the boys in red corpse factory. Nasty with the blue flag. Gazebo with the red. Nasty gets hung up on a corner and gets dropped, and Master Shake returns the flag. Yeah. Gazebo will have a chance to cap it if he can manage to make it back inside his own base. Oh, I'm sorry, I freaking blew your face off. Inspector didn't even see what hit him. Gazebo was behind him with the flag. That could have been the frag that really cost them this round as we were all tied up. Let's go. And it's Dexter, once again, with the flag, making his way back. And look at Gazebo using the stealth adrenaline power up. Doesn't even see him. Invisible. Gazebo's covered some good ground, nice and fast. Give that back, you little. Oh, last minute. And he almost plants it, but Dexter sneaks in there and leaps across the gap. He gets dropped. The flag is dropped. Gazebo goes down as well. The red flag is returned. The blue flag is still loose inside their base, though. Nasty grabs the blue flag, but goes down. It's really getting 
interesting here now. That was incredibly closely. We almost saw the boys in blue team rednecks pull ahead. Come on, guys, we can't get that close and lose it. And both flags are missing as Spectre worms his way in, grabs a flag, and Master Shake defends it, returns it himself, and he's gonna plant it, making this two to one. Oh, last minute, Nasty took it. Oh, Nasty sneaks in there from behind. Oh! All hell is breaking loose inside the blue base. Now we're in overtime with a one-to-one -one tie. It will last for three minutes, after which we will base the victor on points. Did you hear that ad lib, Ray? Rareman just rose. Huh? He's got a napkin. He's my sleeve. Actually, it's on your sleeve. Oh. Master Shake goes in unopposed, grabs red flag. Uh, nobody around him. Master, Master Shake unopposed, oh. but he goes down. Yeah, just that clear. Inspector returns it. Now we see Dexter try to make his way in. And he comes in. Oh, he oh. drops down to his own death. Did it again. Dexter had the right idea, but unfortunately, he failed to execute it. Get that flag back. Dexter with the blue flag, Gazebo with the red, one-to-one -one tie in overtime. Oh, and I see the head popping out. This could be the final push. And he's made his way back in, but Nasty with a last-second snatch. Oh. Got it. Grabs the flag, and he's making his way out of the bottom of the base. 15 seconds left on the verge of a stalemate. He oh, dropped the flag to Gazebo. Oh, Gazebo. my hurts still and time ticks away it's anybody's game rareman tell us about the damn scoreboard the rednecks taking an overtime on points 121 to 118 perhaps one of the closest matches we've ever seen in arena history i'm losing my hair three and now we're underway guys there's a great bottleneck right there right in that tunnel they're not letting anybody through there one's down next one but the barricade has been dropped. The third objective for the red team, Team Corpse Factory, is to destroy those locks on that gate. There's two of them. And that's Tet Offensive up top in the turret for Team Kaizen. Trying to mow them down as they take the high road, but that turret's almost dead. He's gonna have to switch to his link gun and repair it, but he doesn't. That could be a serious mistake. The gun's dead. Damn, I'm right. Keep going, keep going. Corpse Factory seems to be having their way here. Although it does appear that Corpse Factory is having a little trouble with these locks here. Well, Dexter's doing a good job as he chips away at the lock on the left hand side of your screen one's down and there it is the left lock explodes both locks explode and they're moving on subway baby team kaizen has to defend the command center and hey, this is where we make a stand after an early flurry and success for the corpse boys a bit of a snag here specter on the left hand ramp as he takes down ted offensive but is unable to make it to the command center we're halfway through the round with the Corpse Factory on offense, Kaiser on defense. That's a multi-kill. We can get an ultra-kill first. And Lee, one thing I think we're seeing here is that the strategy that Corpse Factory had earlier, the teamwork, has all but fallen apart. They seem to just be rushing in. Multi-kill. Oh, there's a multi. Our season bets showing why they deserve to be here in our Tournament of Champions. Time is ticking away, but they have chipped away at the health of that one command center. Some of the explosives have been planted, but it's going to take just a bit more if they want to stand a chance at actually taking this round of assault. Go, go, go. And Kaizen now takes the reins on offense. Get that barricade down uh, fast. Oh. And almost immediately, the barricade is seriously critical on health. Matt completes the objective. And only a minute into the round, and Kaiser is moving all over the map. Already, the right lock blows up with zero problem. Both locks destroyed. Matt completes an objective. Kaizen has to get in there and get that command center. This one should be easy. They seem confident. They do have seven minutes to do it. Well, they should be confident. Woob's just completed one of the objectives. And Kaizen, in short order, dispenses of Corpse Factory. Hey, that was quick, guys. Nice yeah. job. Four. The Rednecks versus Vulgar. The Rednecks are 1-0, Kevin, and Vulgar is 0-1. And, and we see Master Shake bringing all the boys to the death. Ultra kill. And Inano up top, crouched with that sniper rifle, trying to pick off spawning members of Team Vulgar. We see Neo with the mini cannon there, trying to unload on the turret, trying to chip away at the health there. Bad Lieutenant respawns inside. <laughs> they still have yet to take down that turret, and that's costing them on health. And the objectives are not falling by the wayside for and Team Vulgar because of great defense by Team Rednecks. Freak is right near the objective, but he didn't bother to step on it. Get across, Freak. Finally, a teammate extends the boarding platform, and now we've got two members of Vulgar finally making some headway. And they both get mowed down while jumping across the gap there. Multi-kill. You gotta get across that bridge. Uh, finally, someone from Vulgar reads the top of their screen. Oh, they have to get across the bridge. Hmm. All eyes on Doc. Well, nope, he continues with the just suck strategy. Yeah, we hear you. Strategy seems to have changed. Shoot up there is now the strategy. Dockafall could hop in the turret and mow down all the members of Rednecks on their side of the vehicle, but he chooses not to. He'd rather leap in between the vehicles and try to hoof it. A piss-poor performance from Team Vulgar. Offense, yo. And the Rednecks take off on offense, and Kevin, I can already sense that this is going to be a record round in its brevity. Come come, guys. And the boarding platform has been extended. Gazebo has completed the first objective. God damn it. They're already seven minutes ahead of the pace set by Team Vulgar. 
and the explosives have been planted. Gazebo completing yet another objective. He is Spain. Boom go the doors. Gazebo has infiltrated the Nexus missile area. That's what I'm talking about. And he's already in the process of retrieving them unopposed. All eyes on Gazebo. And he will complete this objective, and Team Rednecks will completely humiliate Team Bulger. We love playing SOCOM. Are you in there, SOCOM? <laughs> All right, so we've really only seen one close game so far with Team Rednecks edging out the Corpse Factory on total points and capture the flag. Now, Team Kaizen, they appear to be the team to beat as they absolutely dominated Team Bulger and the Corpse Factory in that first round, while the Rednecks, well, they cleaned Team Bulger's clock. However, we've got two more rounds to see who will be moving on, so take it away, Big Daddy. Like you said, Kevin, only two more rounds to go, and it looks like Team Kaizen and Rednecks are on a collision course for our tournament finals and a trip to Hawaii. But, as we all know, here in Arena, things can change in a hurry. So when we come back, it'll be the last gasp for the Corpse Factory and Team Ogre. And it's all coming up, and you know where, right here on Arena. Welcome back to Arena, everyone. Now, before the break, you saw the four best teams of the season squaring off with the right to fight for destination vacation and that all expenses paid trip to hawaii and the bragging rights and all the good stuff that goes with it kaizen and rednecks got off on the right foot as they won their first two matches but the corpse factory and team vulgar they stuck but they didn't come here to lose so let's go back to kevin who's standing by with ray for some words of wisdom all right thank you camp counselor rareman ray it looks like your prediction is coming true can anybody stop team kaizen i'd say at this point kevin it's not going to happen i mean they got the confidence they got the skills they're backing up with their play and their talk it's all over. All right, well, now that you've seen all four teams play, who do you think will actually be joining Tyson? Well, you've seen who, uh, who's advancing, who's doing good, and who's just falling apart and just can't handle the pressure. So I think at this point, it's Kaizen and Rednecks. They're going to move on, and those two teams just can't handle it. All right, well, do you have any advice for those two teams? I mean, they, they still have a chance to step it up. Well, at this point, I mean, unless something happens with those you know, two winning teams, you're not going to get up there. So you want to save face. Just play your game. Don't let them get inside your head. Just finish it up. All right, and finally, I know you're biased, but how do these teams stack up against, say, uh, Team Zombie? If we played them, they'd lose. All right, fair enough. Enough with the trash talk. Let's get back to the action with Onslaught Mode of Unreal Tournament 2004. Five. Bulger and Corpse Factory. This is their chance to save some face and to mathematically not be eliminated. I got it, I got it. And right off the bat, Team Corpse Factory grabs that middle node, having played this map before in the arena. They know exactly how important a quick assault is, and they are already taking away some power from the red team's power core. And as we've seen in previous arenas, once this bad boy goes into overtime, a simple 1% difference can spell the difference between victory and defeat. And I'm curious as to what Ray thinks about the vehicles in this game. Well, uh, I like to stick to the big vehicles myself, like the big, you know, tanks and big monster vehicles. But if you're looking for speed, maybe kamikaze techs, you want to get in those light fast ones and just ram into the power nodes into the base and just get in there. Who's defending the core? And fast pace is what this round is because the red power core is already critical. Yeah, the round is anything but equal as Team Corpse Factory knows that they're in serious trouble here. And if they want to compete that trip, they've really got to step it up here. And they're doing just that as their power core is down. 4% health, and Mulger's power core explodes on the strength of excellent Corpse Factory offense. Is that it? That's it, it's over. Six. It's in blue, it's Kaizen. In red, it's the Rednecks. And it perhaps may be safe to predict that previous rounds were just the Sparklers and Lee. This is going to be the big finale. And look at that, Inano doesn't even bother destroying the hell better. He just plows right into it, knocks it on its side. It gets a taste of his own medicine, the Hellbender goes down, Inato pops out in time, and the blue team has built up a power node near their own base, so all eyes on that middle node. Take it down. Team Rednecks had possession of it for a moment, but Kaizen quickly came in and destroyed it. They're using their teamwork great. They got the link guns together, building those nodes, using that speed. They're working it. Oh yeah, work it. Get some. Get some! Oh, freaking bed just got owned. A little trash talk for Kaizen, actually. Teams that communicate fare the best. Ray, when you guys, when Team Zombie participates, do you guys talk a lot? We talk all the time, the constant chatter. I mean, it's always, you know, relevant to the, uh, our situation, but it's always like, where you at, where you at, what you doing? Cover me, cover me. Do you have to repeat everything twice? You can't just say go one time, you gotta go, 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 go. But do you have to repeat everything twice? Oh, yeah, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm on your side, Ray. Come on, guys. And the red team loses the power node outside their base. Team Kaizen is steamrolling here. The red team power core having taken some damage. It's sitting there pretty at 89% health. And the red power node and power core both under attack. The power core is at 50% and it's draining fast. And that'll do it. Team Kaizen, in spectacular fashion, gives you a preview of the next show. 
Oh, we're done. Wow. All right. All right, well, everybody started out on equal footing today, but it was clear from our first round of gameplay that Kaizen and Rednecks, they were just a cut above the Corpse Factory and Team Vulgar. I'm not sure if they were just rusty after their long layoff or if they just sucked, but Team Vulgar finished the day at 0-3 in the Corpse Factory. Well, at least they sucked a little bit less, closing out at 1-2 and two, while the Rednecks posted a 2-1 to one record. So if you've ever paid attention in math class, you know that Kaizen ran the table and went 3 to nothing, which means that our last round today was just a preview of what's to come as Kaizen and Rednecks are our two finalists. But right now, Big Daddy's going to bring it home for us. That's right, Kevin. I'm with the two teams that didn't suck at all because the die has been cast. And it reads, Team Kaizen versus Team Rednecks. And they'll be returning to fight for all the marbles and the chance to join Ray and Team Zombie at the top of the heap. We are one step away from finding a winner of Destination Vacation and that all-expenses-paid trip to Hawaii. And we'll see who will be the ultimate arena champion right here next time on Arena.